I'm going to be doing a button cover tutorial for those of you who uh, haven't done covered buttons before. I have two kinds. The ones that they sell at Joanne actually come with the uh, button container and then you have the big pushy thing and I'm trying to find, oh, here's the pushy thing. <laughs> so they come in a lot of different sizes. So of course, this is for a huge button. Then we got one for like a five eighths inch button or a three quarter inch button. And there's the pushy thing to match. Okay, and you'll see what the pushy things do in a few seconds. And then we have the small one for the small buttons. So the reason why I have so many of these is because I've covered all different sizes of buttons because I've been sewing for a long time. So what I do is when I buy the one with the that comes inside the kit, then I just save it and I only buy the refills going forward. So you don't have to buy this piece every time. And it's maybe like a dollar more in the kit. The only time I rebuy these is if I'm in a hurry and that's all of that they have left. They don't have any more refills and I'll go ahead and buy the one with the little uh, rubber thing in it. So if it's a cover button that you've never purchased before and it has the, uh, the piece in it, Go ahead and get that if you don't think these will work. Go ahead and get the one that comes in the kit, and then you, when you get home, you know for sure that you'll have it, okay? Now, here's all you do. Okay, this one is the top or the button itself, and you see it's just like a little... Uh, cylinder and it has the opening and you actually cover the outside and then you have this piece which once you get your fabric in it fits inside and then you use the little pushy thing to push it in that one and then for this type of button you can actually see the button and the shank. And then you see those little grooves around the edges. These cost a little bit more, not a whole lot more but just a little bit more. And these are just little biting grooves. They're kind of like this, like you see my hand. And what they do is they bite and hold the fabric. So I'm gonna cover one with this one as well. So these bite and hold the fabric. And these don't come with the little pushy thing. The pushy thing are your thumbs, <laughs> okay? You're gonna find a good angle. And what I was doing in the beginning when I first started covering buttons, I was just cutting out a piece of square fabric <laughs> and putting the button on top. Okay, so what you have to do is make sure that you have an equal amount of room all the way around the button. And you can see here, I have long sides. And then you can see here, I have short sides. Now, what I'm suggesting that you're doing is cut an even square of fabric that's bigger than your button. So right now, I got more sides on the end than I do on the outside. So what I like to do is I take my thumb and I'll see if the sides reach. These don't reach to my liking, so I need a piece that's a little bit bigger. Now, when I take that long side and I reach it, look how nicely it goes inside the inside of the button. So I need a bigger square. This ain't big enough, all right? And another thing that I do is with my fabric, I try and cut a bias piece. If you cut a bias square, what happens with the bias fabric is it's not gonna fray away on you because bias threads don't fray and it's much easier to work with. So now I got a square around my circle. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it down just a little in the circle form. Now it ain't gotta be a perfect circle, all of you uh, 
Does it have to be a perfect circle? And I'm getting ready to show you right now that it don't. <laughs> because I am not a per perfect circle cutter. All right, I got my little circle cut from my big square. Now I got my circle. And all I'm going to do is work the fabric into the center, into the center of my button. All right. So now I'm going to work it. So you guys can see here, I'm holding it with my thumb and I'm just pushing all the pieces inside, inside. Okay, looks like it's pretty good. Then you take your little button thingy, you push the button in it. This is the fun part. <laughs> push the button inside. So the button is inside the little white guy there. And now we can see, and what I like to do is after I get my button inside, I kind of go in and I stretch out any puckles. You know those little puckles that you get when you sew your sleeve on? Those little folds. Sometimes you'll get a little fold on the side of your button. Go in and stretch it out. And now I got my edges stretched out that there are no little folds. Okay? Everybody see that? Now, once you have it in the little cup, you can actually trim some of this off. Let me get my smaller scissors. I'm going to trim a little bit of this off. And the reason why you're going to trim some off is because when we do the little bottom half, we don't want it to be so full of fabric that it doesn't snap in. So I'm actually using the little white piece as a guide. I have my scissors up against the edge of the little white piece. And I'm just cutting off the excess. That's all. All right, so I cut off the excess. Now all I got to do is fold that in. Stuffing it in. I'm stuffing it in. You can see I just stuffed it all in. And you take the little cup thing, and it goes right on top. So I'm making like a button sandwich. And I take my little pushy thing. <laughs> That's what we're going to call this, the pushy thing. Then you take your little pushy thing, and it goes right on top. You'll have this piece. You buy this with the buttons. And then you take this pushy thing, and you push it in. I'm going to show you guys something really, really funny. And I'm pushing it in. I'm applying a little pressure, so I'm being good. Because I'm on a uh, video demo, but I'm going to show y'all real life. <laughs> see my pushy thing? Y'all see the little dents on the pushy thing? That's from teeth marks. Because sometimes I get real and I be like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> I have to do it all the time, but I ain't going to lie. I do it sometimes. So if ain't nobody looking. Go ahead and push it and you use your teeth. Just don't bite too hard or you're going to have bite marks on your button on the other side. <laughs> but that works too. But I was able to push. <laughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> but somebody say, you know what? I'm just going, can I bite this? Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> All right. So I did the pushy thing. And you can actually feel it pop into place. Then when it's into place, you just take it out of the little white thing. And guess what? It is done. Ta-da! That's all you do. It's finished. There's no little buckles and no little puckles around the edge. And there's our little shank. And you can see it. Now it's nice. It's ready to sew on. All right? So I just did a demo with the little pushy thing. Okay, now I'm going to do a demo with the teeth. All right, so I am going to cut a piece of fabric to go with this big one. And I don't mind using this big one because I'm probably not going to use this big one for anything. So 
my demo is fine. All right, again, I'm cutting my fabric on the bias. And it's so much easier when you cut it on the bias because if you cut it on the grain, when you start working that fabric in with your fingers, it's going to fray all over the place. And you don't need that, especially if you're doing something that's brocade or uh, you're doing a fabric like a homespun, something that's really uh, fray prone, I guess you can say. All right, so now I got this big whopping piece. I'm going to make the square much smaller. All right, so now I got my square. Then I'm going to cut my circle. And with the circle, remember what I was telling you, the only thing I'm doing is rotating the fabric. And it ain't got to be no perfect circle. Ain't nobody watching. Don't nobody judge you except your husband. And he ain't supposed to be in your sewing room anyway, so kick his ass out. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> well, okay, let's just take that down to my own situation. <laughs> All right. Now, there we go with the uh, button with the biters on it. Okay. Um, now with the biters, since we don't have the pushy thing, we have our thumbs. Okay. So here's what you do with the biters. All you do is take your fabric and make sure it gets stuck in the biters. See how it's stuck in the biters? Watch your thumbs because sometimes you can stick yourself with the, with the biters, but I've done this so many times I'm kind of used to it. So I'm just rotating the fabric. And then as you go with these, then you work out the bubbles. So I'm doing literally a bit at a time. So I don't get that bubbles in the side. And then what's kind of nice about the biters is the biters continue to hold the fabric as you work your way around. And the biters are kind of like claws like this. So I'm working the fabric underneath the claws, underneath the biters. That's how I'm working the fabric. And I'm using my thumbs. These, these buttons hold the fabric really nicely. So I just went back. I had a piece that actually came out of the biter. So I'm just going back, working it in. Working it in. So it's up to you to buy whatever you want to buy. And I guess what's, you know, what's available at the store that you're going to. Because uh, once you put the fabric on them, it all looks the same. All right, I'm still working this one in. And there's some pieces that kind of want to keep popping off. So I'm working it. I'm working it. Actually, I am. I'm done working it. So you can see here. The actual button itself, I've worked it into the biters. Some places a little better than others. <laughs> so I'm just going back and I'm just double checking. Now I'm ready to put the top on. So now here's the top and there's a little ridge. You can see the ridge on the top. What that is, it's like putting the top on a can. You just put it in and you push it and it sits right in. You can see that little ridge right there. That's how you know the top from the bottom. All right. So now I set it in. All I got to do now is push. Oh, did y'all hear that snap? It just snapped in for me. This one's done. Okay. Like I said, these ones with the little ridges, they cost a little bit more. But like I said, I use them both. And the main thing, and here's the trick about button covers or covered buttons if you've never done them before, always make sure that around the edge, let me get a better look here, around the edge that there's no puckers and no pinches, just like when you sew in a sleeve, you'll see those little puckles and those little sleeves. With the ones with the biters, you can just go back and you can smooth it out with your thumb, retuck. Smooth it out, retuck. So you're actually tucking them underneath the biters. Okay, so this is the button cover with the biter. 
and this is the button covered with a little button kit okay so there you have it and there are button covers uh, covered buttons that you can buy that will allow you to put a little glue on and uh, do the glue base. And then there you have the little fun little square or decoration that goes on top. It's up to you. But what's fun about button covers, like these little buttons that I did that are black, I can go ahead and get some um, Swarovski crystals and, you know, maybe just put a few crystals around the edge of the button and then I can really customize them. So once you get your fabric on, you can either do plain fabric or you can go ahead and you can decorate up. Okie dokie, this concludes the lesson of the button cover mystery. Okay, I'm looking at the comments. I told you guys I got my camera in a weird spot. And uh, you said they only have the biters in the big size. No, the biters coming off. <laughs> the biters <laughs> the biters come in all sizes i've had big ones i've had little small ones actually um here in my kit here's some biters that are actually 7 16 so these are very small these are uh small enough for uh, a collar and um you know these are like uh the little buttons that you put on a men's shirt okay so they have them in all different sizes so and the biters remember look at the actual button the biters come with claws they do not come with these little kits these kits are uh in with the actual package and they actually look different the buttons themselves do not have the little biters on the edge okay so buy them both test them both um to me, it seems like that uh, because a lot of people don't know how to do the biters or they're not sure, these are the ones that are a little harder to find and that are in stock, uh, the ones with the uh, kits, because most people just say, okay, well, the kit's in there. Let me just grab that one. But now you guys know how to do the biters too, so you can do both of them as well. So this video is going to stay up in the group. So if you're doing... Um, custom cover buttons, you can also refer back to the video and hope this helps.